G'day everybody and thank you for watching the Flaming Cock Podcast, our second show here on YouTube. Uh, I'm your host Hayden Morris and um, now we've got a, a pretty good looking show for you today I hope. Um, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, first let's talk about uh, the UFC, the fights over the last weekend. Um, Amanda Nunez successfully defended her title against uh, uh, Raquel Pennington, uh, beat her by uh, TKO in the fifth. Uh, there was a lot about uh, Pennington and whether or not her coach should have stopped the fight, but uh, she said she's proud of her coaches for not stopping it. Uh, she I'd, I'd be mad if uh, my corner stopped my fight, but um, yeah, no, good on good on her for giving it a go. But uh, now this sets up Nunez versus. Cyborg, which uh, is the fight everyone wants anyway. So, yeah, I'm not saying it was a full blown conclusion or anything, but uh, Crown Bed absolutely did. Um, Kelvin Gaslam uh, won a split decision with uh, Jacare Souza, um, which is good. He thinks he deserves a title shot now, which uh, I think there's an argument. But um, if he's willing to wait uh, for. Um, Whitaker versus uh, Romero. It, it could be a while, especially if um, Whitaker gets injured or you know anything goes wrong with that fight. But um, I, I, I think he deserves it. He makes a good point. Um, I don't know what's next for either of them, but uh, yeah, Jacques Ray's got options as well. You know, former world champ. Uh, why not? And. Uh, Leo Machida knocked out Vitor Belfort in uh, Belfort's retirement fight, or not retirement fight, uh, with the same front kick that Anderson Silva used to knock out Vitor Belfort that he learned from Steven Seagal. But uh, yeah, Leo, it was it was good. Uh, he was setting it up, but um, yeah, I, I watched him uh, in a comparison video the, about the front kick knockouts. Um, it sort of makes me feel bad for Belfour, I'm going to be honest, but, um, say la vie. Um, Ryan Bader knocked out uh, King Mo in 15 seconds to uh, advance in the Bellator Heavyweight Tournament, uh, and he'll take on Matt Mitrione next, and uh, Mitrione has said uh, that the dream scenario for him would be um, to beat Ryan Bader and get to fight uh, Fedor for a second time, seeing as Mitrione knocked out Ryan Bader, uh, sorry, Matt, uh, Fedor Emelianenko uh, just a few months ago. Um, but yeah, I guess, and um, King Mo said after the fight that he would move down to middleweight, um, which is probably a good option. He's a, he's a small heavyweight, a very small heavyweight. Not a huge light heavyweight, so why not go test the waters down there? Plus, being knocked out by the light heavyweight champion, regardless of it, light heavyweight or at heavyweight, sort of got to knock you out of the running for a rematch, especially in a 15 second knockout. Um, uh, also, over the weekend, Vasil Lomachenko TKO'd uh, Linares in the 10th. Um, and has come out recently, just this week, saying that he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao next. Which, um, or he, maybe not next, uh, because there's a good chance here that Lomachenko is likely to face uh, the WBO champ, uh, Ray Beltran. But, um, it, it's a good fight. It's uh, probably better for uh, Loma, because... Um, well, he's, he's like the glitch in the matrix uh, the media's been saying, and I, I've got to agree. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good money fight. Pacquiao's still a very good name, good uh, good option. Uh, also, uh, Mikey Garcia, the uh, WBC lightweight champ, he's come out and said, I, want, uh, I can stop Lomachenko... Uh, he's not invincible, uh, which is pretty good. Um, but speaking of uh, Mikey Garcia, 
he's been in talks with uh, Zufa Boxing. Uh, Dana White said that. I uh, can't remember the source. But uh, Garcia and uh, his management, I think it's his brother Robert Garcia. Um, I know it's his brother, I think it's Robert. But uh, yeah, he said uh, he's been in talks with uh, Zufa Boxing, uh, which is the parent company of the UFC. Uh, and he's also been in talks with. Eddie Hearn, who is uh, Anthony Joshua's uh, promoter, and um, yeah, he said that uh, Eddie Eddie Hearn has uh, got in contact with uh, Garcia uh, almost immediately after Dana White told everyone that he'd been in talks with uh, with him. But um, uh, yeah, Garcia said Dana White commented, uh, uh, Eddie Hearn got in contact with him as soon as Dan White was done. But, um, Garcia, WBC lightweight champ, uh, 38 and 0, um, he also said that, uh, the, the financial specifics in the, uh, in what Eddie Hearn has sent him, uh, and I quote, financial specifics are good. Um, it's, been reported that uh, he made around three million dollars in his last fight, might be more, um, and that that's somewhere the Eddie Hearn offer is somewhere similar to that. And um, Eddie Hearn, he recently made an eight-year uh, deal with on-demand sports sharing uh, platform the Zone. That's how it's spelled does own um, or how it's pronounced it's spelled like D-Z-N-E or something pronounced does own but um, eight years Eddie Hearn and his team are uh, contracted with and it was a one billion dollar deal which that's a uh, I'd, I'd sign it with anyone with a stupid name um, well for free the flaming cock right for a billion. Um, Hearn said he was also looking to sign Deontay Wilder, uh, Jermel and uh, Jamal Charlo, uh, Errol Spence Jr. and Keith Thurman, mostly guys who don't have uh, promotional representation already. Um, and Garcia, uh, he's been inactive for uh, two years um, thanks to contract disputes with Bob Arum. Um, but he's going to be fighting the IBF champ, uh, Robert Easter Jr. And, um, which is really interesting because uh, it's likely that Loma, as I said before, would be fighting uh, the WBO champ, Ray Beltran. Um, which, if Garcia and uh, Lomachenko win uh, their fights, they'll each have two of the sanctioning bodies world titles and then uh, they could get them to meet up for uh, the unification belt which uh, it's, al it's always good to have a unification in in uh, in boxing there's too many belts already um, let's stick in with boxing Canelo Alvarez has been dropped from the WBC ratings for um, not enrolling in their Test their testing program, but um, he has signed up with uh, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Agency uh, for year-round testing. Uh, so make of that what you will. Uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction to to sign up with them. To with uh, Vada, they're they're uh, renowned, they're well known, they're um, well respected. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, not in the WBC rankings anymore. Um, hopefully he doesn't get busted again or hopefully he doesn't do steroids again anyway but whatever oh sorry doesn't eat cow meat I should say um, and uh, real quick I'll just uh, bring up what I said last week 50 cents signing with Bellator um, Chael Sonnen said, made a good point on his podcast um, that Trace Adkins the country singer was also signed to Bellator and um, but that was just so that he could sing the na national anthem so 
Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's just signed on to. Well, he's probably not signed on to sing a national anthem or something, but uh, using some sort of promotional. Promotional. Uh, um, way, I guess. So, I can't think of a better word to say, sorry. But uh, yeah, they're just using for promotions, and um, I don't know. I'd, I still highly doubt that he's going to come in and fight a former world champion uh, with zero experience. Um, anyway, this weekend coming up, we've got uh, the a UFC Fight Night uh, 129 and Santiago Ponzinibbio, the Pons. He uh, has has dropped out of the main event against uh, Kamaru Kamaru Usman, sorry. And um, he's been replaced on short notice by Damien Meyer, which, um, yeah, it, uh, that was going to be a good fight. I still think they're going to get a good fight. And it's good that they uh, came up with a, a really good um, replacement fighter. But, um, yeah, Meyer's come out this week and said that he could retire uh, after his contract is up. Uh, with the UFC, he just signed a n new contract after his last fight. <clears throat> she made the uh, a decision loss to Colby Covington. Um, he just signed a new fo uh, four fight deal, and um, this will be the first fight, the one against Usman on the new contract. Um, but we'll get into that fight a little bit later and uh, break that one down. Um, and as I'm sure you are aware, uh, Mackenzie Dern uh, missed weight last week uh, for, for her fight against uh, Amanda Cooper. She came in 7 pounds overweight and uh, this week on on uh, Instagram she she put up a post of uh, her saying how it was unprofessional. She wanted to thank the UFC, thank, the, uh, thank her opponent Amanda Cooper for taking the fight still. And um, she said uh, that it will make her a better fighter and it's not going to happen again. Those sorts of things. Um, and the UFC find her higher than normal for weighing in uh, 7 pounds overweight, higher than normal apparently. I don't know exactly how much. But uh, the best part was uh, four days before the fight, um, Mackenzie Dern... Uh, posted a photo of her with a scale uh, talking about how good it was, how it tracked body fat and everything and how good it was and um, I was going to write down and say here the uh, the promotional deal so that you could get that but um, to get a 10% off or 20-30% off whatever it was but uh, obviously the scales don't work so I'll leave that out here um, also uh, Sacramento Police in California are uh, looking into an alleged assault involving Nate Diaz. Uh, Nate apparently got into some sort of a scuffle with uh, Clay Guida and and his friends, and uh, the two two groups were jawing at jawing at each other. Um, and uh, Nate smacked somebody. Um, I, I did see one picture, uh, a bloke, he put up a, a tweet, put, took a photo of his face and said um, how he tried to step in, intervene, and um, Nate reached out and slapped him in the face. Um, and he had and he said uh, to Nate that you hit like a bitch in the tweet, um, which I thought was funny considering the dude had this big goose egg about here and a black eye if he only got hit once. and. If he hits like a bitch, what's that say about him? Um, uh, what else? Were, um, Moscow, sorry, uh, UFC is going to be in Moscow September 15. They're going to finally uh, make their way over to Russia. Um, which, uh, you know, that's good because it's Khabib time. And uh, it's just for a fight night though, so I don't think that we'll be getting uh, Khabib on there. Um, but, you know, it's exciting. It's, it's now going to be around the world. It's going to be a real world champion, you know? Uh, all the titles. I mean, they already are, but it's exciting. It's gone to new places. 
Um, and I'll finish uh, my news segment on this. Uh, recently, you know, this is the feel good story. I like to end on a good feel good story. You know, to, to br some of this stuff, missing weight and getting fined. Um, I've said something about Bob Aaron before. You know, that's just really depressing stuff. So I thought I'll end on a happy note. And um, Floyd Mayweather has won $100,000 on a video poker tournament and it's just good to see good things happening to good people anyway let's move on to the breakdown now of uh, Damien Meyer Kamaru Usman um, well, uh, we'll start with uh, Damien Meyer the uh, two time title challenger and two of the worst title fights Ever. Um, I think it goes the uh, the super fight back uh, between Ken Shamrock and and uh, uh, who was Dan Seven, where they weren't allowed to use closed fists. So for about fifteen minutes, they walked around each other like this, and I don't know. Then it went to the ground and went to a draw, and it was probably the longest half an hour in fighting there's ever been. Uh, then after that it goes Damien Meyer, Tyron Woodley and then Damien Meyer, Anderson Silva. At least the Anderson Silva was like fun for two rounds and then you know you want to gouge your eyes out for the next three. Anyway Damien Meyer, uh, six foot one, 170 pounds 72 inch reach, 40 years old, and he fights in Southpaw. Um, Karen Usman on the other side of the cage, 6 feet, 170 pounds, 76 inch reach, 31 years old, and uh, he switches his stance, uh, depending on how he's feeling. Um, sorry, my recorder just fucked up. Anyway, um, uh, Damien Meyer holds a record of 25 wins, 8 losses, um, and has gone 3 and 2 in his last 5, coming off a decision, uh, 2 decision losses, the latest to uh, Colby Covington. Um, Usman, 21, sorry, 12 wins, 1 loss, uh, 7 and 0 in the UFC, and has been on an 11 fight win streak. Um, Damien Meyer, of course, fourth, fourth degree jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, his style was listed as uh, BJJ and kickboxing. Um, probably should just be BJJ, let's admit it. He does have good striking, but I wouldn't go calling him a kickboxer. Uh, Usman, of course, he's a wrestler, uh, NCAA Division II uh, champ. And also a kickboxer. Um, not super sure on that. All I've seen is a couple of highlight videos on him, and he he, look, he looks more inclined to wrestle. Um, but uh, Damien Meyer, a couple of uh, accomplishments: a uh, ADCC champ uh, in 07, Pan American Jiu Jitsu champ, uh, CBJJ, sorry CBJJ World Champ in uh, 2000 and uh, CBJJ Brazil champ in 2001. Um, th there was more, but a uh, save a tree, right? Um, of course, when Jack Ray was there, I killed the tree, so the duality of man. Cameron uh, Usman, uh, right, all I've got here is he won the Ultimate Fighter American Top Team versus Black Zillions. Uh, season. That's. Uh, I think he's got maybe a fight night or a performance of the night bonus. Bonus, sorry to his name. Um, but uh, yeah, he's on. Like I said, he's on eleven fight win streak, and out of his twelve wins, uh, six have been uh, knockouts or TKOs. Um, but yeah, Damian Meyer. We know what he's coming in to do. He's going to look to take the fight to the ground. Um, score, score on a takedown. Probably a double. Is good, good doubles, 
good singles, good transitioning a single uh, from anywhere into a good position. Um, he, he's great sweeps. Um, he's probably the, he's arguably the best on the ground in the in any combat sports. Sorry, I just seen that one out of focus. Cool. Um, but he's probably the best. Is Damien White in um, in on, on the ground? Uh, arguably him and him and Jacare Souza. Um, I'm pretty sure Damien Maya beat in uh, straight jiu-jitsu competition. So, and I, I think I heard once that Damien Maya also beat um, uh, Big Fab Verdum. So, I, I've got to say Damien Maya is the best at uh, at uh, at uh, jiu-jitsu. Um, but yeah, great sweeps, great double legs, single leg. Just it'll get you to the ground. Uh, likes to use his ground and pound to set up his submissions. Um, he's always looking for a rear naked choke. Um, and his striking has gotten better, especially from where he started with none as to now. I know I've made a crack before, but it, it is a decent kickboxer for for what he does. Um, he does definitely have an underrated left hand, but um, you know, he's not He's not going, going to go win a K1 championship or go to glory anytime soon. Uh, Usman on the other side of the cage there is a good wrestler. Uh, he's got all right power that from what I saw. Um, is definitely more of a, the pressure and the um, and the pace that he sets that helps him win more than his power. But um, he's all over you like a, like a cheap suit. But um, I, uh, from the highlights I watched, he, he, he likes a body lock to get the takedown. Um, also had a mean double leg, um, consistent ground and pound. I wouldn't say it was anything like uh, like Mark Munoz, you know, loading way back up here and uh, and dropping dropping bombs. But um, he didn't seem to stop, and he didn't look like he was slowing down. So it's, it's very good ground and pound. Um, he had good footwork, good feints, um, and his striking. It looks like it's not world world class, not yet, but it's definitely he's definitely gotten better. But um, yeah. Um, also, uh, Usman is from uh, the Hard Knocks three six five camp down in Florida. Excuse me, and uh, Damien Meyer. His camp is uh, Damien Meyer Jiu Jitsu in Brazil. Um, but it, it's an intriguing fight. I think I'd still rather see um, see Usman fight uh, the Pons, but I'd like to see the Pons fight anybody, especially Darren Till. Uh, I think that's a that's a fight to make. Um, but as for this one, I think I've got to. I'm, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Usman uh, for the win. Probably, he'll probably have to keep a better pace. Probably, uh, yeah, like I said, put on the pressure. If he can keep it standing, which I think he's, uh, he'll be able to out wrestle Maya and uh, keep it on the feet. Especially knowing that Maya is coming out there to take you down to get you back to choke you until you tap out or go nine eyes. But um, yeah, I think. I think Usman takes in the third, maybe the fourth round. Uh, he'll just be able to outpace Meyer, keep that going, stay stay strong into those rounds. Um, also, I'm not, not trying to discredit Meyer or anything. Usually, uh, if if you've listened to other podcasts or watched, uh, you'll know that I usually put one guy or girl just just dismiss her or him, him or her, and um, all. I dismiss all, but not now. I think Damien Myers, if it does go to the ground, and Usman's best strength is his wrestling. Uh, if it does go to the ground, it's it's Meyer. Meyer's gonna choke him, maybe take an arm or something. But yeah, Usman keeps standing, keeps uh, 
keeps the pressure on. Um, and why, yeah, he took it on short notice, is what I was going to say before. He, um, I, I'm, I'm not going to say he's not going to come, come in uh, bad, come in bad condition or anything. Um, and I don't think he's ever missed weight, but at the same time, short notice, um, what's the, what's the cut like? What's, uh, what was he doing when he didn't think he had a fight coming up? So I've got to give it to, uh, to Woodsman, I think. Um, sorry, my phone's here trying to record and, uh, it's a piece of crap, but, um, hopefully... Usman is the uh, the underdog going in there on the on the crown bet app because that's where I'm putting my money. Um, this last piece here that I've got this is going to be a very short episode apparently. Looking at the time there, but um, and I, I was going to say this in the uh, in the news section, but I thought you now at this top of the show, but I thought I want to save this to the end. This is uh, this is this is fun. For me, Chuck Liddell said on the MMA hour that he's coming out of retirement. Uh, he's looking to fight Tito Ortiz in a in a third fight to make a trilogy. For some reason, he's already beat Tito twice, knocked him out twice. Um, but Liddell said that uh, he wants two warm up fights. <clears throat> Excuse me, one will be against Tito. Um, who is apparently in negotiations to fight. Anyway, uh, but yeah, he wants two warm-up fights, one with Tito, I don't know who the second would be against, and then he wants to fight John Jones. Uh, Liddell, of course, uh, 48 years old, uh, has a record of 21 wins, eight losses, and um, former world champion. Uh, fought a who's who's list there at light heavyweight. And, um, UFC, uh, they passed on this fight. Dana White even said men in their 50s shouldn't be fighting. Um, Bellator, which uh, put on Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie the third, when one man was 49, the other was 52, I think Ken Shamrock was, gone into that fight. Um, they, they, they turned it. They turned it away, which... Um, that's saying something, even Scott Coker and his circus doesn't want a part of it. I say that with all due respect, by the way. That's, uh, that's saying something, if Scott Coker was like, Kimbo, Dada, come here, we'll put you on pay-per-view in the co-main event. But no, no, Chuck, Tito, you, you back the fuck up right there. Um, but the good news on that is, uh, Golden Boy MMA, run by former world boxing champion and current boxing promoter Oscar De La Hoya. Um, they said that they'd like to put that on their first show as the main event, as uh, the marquee. I don't know what numbers that Chuck Liddell's asking for. Apparently it's a lot. But um, uh, uh, it, it, it probably shouldn't happen. Chuck and Tito the third, it doesn't need to. Chuck's knocked him out twice. But um if it does happen I'm gonna watch it. That's it's intriguing to me for I don't know, nostalgia or something I guess. But um Chuck calling out John Jones uh normally you hear that and you go, Thanks Chuck, that's that's great. That's uh that's really wonderful, but um Anyway, you see the next couple of plays out there, champ. Um, and Jones has said, you know, Chuck's been calling me out for years, and uh, if they can make it happen, he'll fly out to Albuquerque right now to start training, and would definitely fight Chuck Liddell. Um, he also tweeted out that uh, Chuck needs to strengthen his jaw before he bites off more than he can chew. Um, now, Jones is still under contract with the UFC, Chuck is not. Uh, there's also the USADA business for uh, for John. But um, uh, so I don't know if it could happen. 
Um, I mean, there's also been talk of uh, Jones versus Chuck in a boxing match, which, hey, that's fun. Why not? Um, I think... Now, I think that the, the real issue here, is there a market? Are people going to tune in to watch uh, John Jones fight Chuck Liddell? Let's say Chuck comes back, beats Tito again, which... Put your money there. Um, if it happens, I'll do a breakdown, but we'd know the answer. Put your money on Chuck. Um, and then Chuck beats a, a second opponent, and they, they decide, the US is like, fuck it, let's do it. Is, is there a market out people going to turn in? Um, I know I said I'm gonna, but yeah, give me a cage fight. Give me a cage, two guys. Put them in their shorts, put some gloves on them. Let them fight. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll watch any fight. But um, are the casual fans going to tune in? The, uh, the, the Conor McGregor crowd? I'm not so sure. Um, a lot, a lot of the uh, the newer fans, the since you went mainstream, I think that a lot of people don't know who Chuck Liddell is. They might have seen him here and there and heard uh, the commentator say, "UFC Hall of Famer Chuck Liddell." Uh, you know, when the camera pans to him at an event. Um, but I, I don't know a lot of. A lot of these fans, these days, uh, they, they don't know who he is. That's not to disrespect anyone who does. And But uh, anyone who says Conor McGregor is their favourite probably isn't too familiar with uh, with Chuck Liddell, who, if you have a look on our Facebook page, our banner is Chuck's fight with, uh, with Vandalay, which is my favourite fight of all time. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure there's a market. Um, even in, in boxing, in MMA, uh, submission grappling, yeah, I'm not sure that there's a very big market for that. Um, anyway, that's all I've got today. Very short show. Um, thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my sponsors. I don't have any, but uh, if you know anyone that's interested, please. Really, please. I'm hungry. Please. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, and that's all i got. Uh, Till next week, bore bore.